so now we come to the crux of the paper. The crux of the paper is the method I ADMM, inexact alternating direction method of multipliers. So uh, before that, let's just talk about ADMM. So uh, in ADMM, basically what happens is that uh, we try to optimize the function, the Lagrangian. So I'll just uh, write it. So in this algorithm, basically what happens is that we initialize and then we start iterating through this entire thing. When we iterate through the entire thing, basically what we are doing is that we take a x equal to some uh, value. So we uh, assign a value to theta. So this is the convention that they use. So they use the current x. They fix the uh, they fix the y and they fix the uh, lambda values. And they are updating the x. So now in this, what they do is that they check whether the theta of t plus one. So the next the x in the next iteration minus theta of t. The x in the current iteration. If it is less than some particular error value, so it is within the range of uh, acceptable error values, then we return the next uh, the x of the next iteration. So we uh, assign this x of the next iteration. Similarly, we do the same thing for y, and then we update lambda of r plus one. So uh, just move to the next slide. Yeah. So uh, this is how they update theta of t plus one. Uh, it is basically the primal dual on top. Like you can see, we have the Lagrange function over there. Uh, this is the same thing. And over here we have the uh, uh, constraint that we have. So uh, theta of t plus one is dependent on the uh, the current value of the theta over here. Uh, v of mu of t, t plus one is dependent on the current value of the mu. Then we update the uh, lambda and then we iterate through it. So this way they fix one point. So they fix uh, two points. I mean, uh, and then they update theta. They fix. Uh, Theta and they fix lambda and they update mu. They fix theta uh, mu and then they update lambda. So that is the way it uh, iterates through this. And this is the inexact ID I ADM method. So inexact alternating direction method of multiplication. It sounds very uh, complicated, but in in theory, like understanding it like this, it is not okay. Uh, yeah. uh, so uh, to talk about the previous. Uh, about, about the previous slide, we have to make some assumption in order to like fit this paper. So this paper presents some uh, five assumptions. So they say that assumption one is function f is smooth and weakly convex with respect to x and y respect to the constant of this one of the value of x. So uh, what is weakly convex? It's in some part it's convex, but uh, in the picture in the big picture. It is convex, but in, in some small part, if you magnify it, it's not convex. It's either non-convex or it's uh, concave case. So it's uh, assuming that in the big picture, it's convex. Okay. For the second assumption that uh, function G is lips sheets continuous uh, with respect to each box. This means like in which uh, the function have it is continuously like linking with each other, even if I reach, even even if x is meeting the extreme point for some minimum or local amount, it is still continuous. So that is what the third third assumption we're talking about. So for the second assumption, it implies for the third assumption, which is the Jacobian matrix. And uh, the relatives of the Jacobian matrix. So, what does the Jacobian matrix did is uh, he helps you to find uh, a point x y that can be the relatives that can be uh, differentiated, and then get a point that is the optimal solution. So, it is continuous, and then it is differentiable. Then. In Jacobian, using the Jacobian matrix, it will help you to find a better solution. So that's the assumption three are talking about. So for the assumption four, uh, each entry of y is lower bounded above zero. So y is the boundary condition, or we call it constraint, that will form a shape, closed shape, that help you to find, uh, in order to let you to find a local mean, a global mean, or local mean. And for the assumption five is f is lower bounded and set of x and set of y are convex 
and compact. Compact means like it does not have infinite points in the shape of the constraint, but it has limited points. So limited point is mean like uh, you don't need to uh, switch to the previous one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So in this region, if you have an infinite point, well, how can you make sure this is the minimum point? No, you can't. So compact means it, have, it has limited point, which is finite point. Then you can figure out, okay, in this point, this is the minimum. So that's how the assumption form the boundaries and the object function together in order to let you to solve the minimum question. Yeah. Uh, so to uh, just bookend all of this, the authors had a uh, example. So they had they created their own data set using f of x y uh, equal to the component y square of x times y minus uh, two. Uh, this is basically the result that they got uh, for a large inner loop step size. The i ALM, so the augmented Lagrange method, uh, was started to diverge for a large step size. Uh, for a, uh, for most of the step sizes. Uh, they found that the ADMM, the IADMM method, converged much faster than the augmented Lagrange method. So the alternating direction method of uh, which the authors found was much better in the uh, in the test condition. But this is a test condition, so it does not reflect any real world. It does not have any real world importance. So the next data set which they tested was a real world data. So this is a real world problem. So this is the congressional voting records data set. So in this, basically, there are uh, 16 columns. The data set had 16 columns. And uh, the last column was whether the particular politician uh, was a uh, Republican or a Democrat. So based on these different different conditions, they try to predict whether the person is a Republican or Democrat. Um, so if you see this graph, uh, there is a very weird thing that happens. So they have predicate one, which is ended with the uh, not of itself. So uh, the authors justify this by saying that uh, they are trying to learn whether the network will learn on its own. So they give it the data and they want to see whether the network will learn the weights uh, of uh, what, what makes a Democrat and what makes a Republican on its own. Over here they have the predicates that they give it. So over here they only have three predicates but they imply that in the paper that they, have, they use all the 16 columns uh, making different different predicates and uh, having Different different combinations. So one combination, two combination, three combination, till sixteen. So sixteen different combinations of each of those columns. So it already goes like huge. The uh, thing goes huge. So uh, in this, uh, the results which we will see, uh, PGD is blue. So projected gradient descent. So uh, I'll just explain what projected gradient descent is. So bounded gradient descent without bounds is our normal gradient descent. Uh, gradient descent which has bounds, which has constraints. Is projected gradient descent. Um, and the uh, rest, they had two models of I ADMM. One was whether alpha, which was a threshold value, one was where it was learnable, and one was where it was not learnable. Okay, uh, we go to the next one. Yeah. Um, so over here, as we can see, uh, the loss value of all three uh, graphs eventually it comes to uh, the same. However, when we see the feasibility error, so the feasibility error is the uh, logical inconsistencies that are there in the data uh, that uh, that are outputted by the graph. Uh, we would we see that the uh, projected gradient descent has a lot of logical inconsistencies. So it can be inferred that the projected gradient descent has reduced the loss value, but it still has logical inconsistencies, which is not what we want. So uh, the authors say that I ADMM. With, with fixing alpha and without fixing alpha, they are much better because they also preserve the logical uh, the logical consistency of the data. So that is the main conclusion that the authors give. Um, they also uh, say that uh, with alpha as learnable, it converges much faster than without alpha learning. So that is also what they say. Oh, next. Uh, so the LMN model with the learnable alpha parameter performed better than the rest. Uh, with minimal constraint violation. So the minimal constraint violation is something that is more important for LNNs uh, than getting a lower loss value. Uh, the IADMM shows some oscillation. So in the previous lecture, we saw that the loss value oscillates. So there was uh, oscillation in this also. 
uh, the solution with PGD had logical inconsistencies. Uh, that is what we saw. And even though all models had approximately similar loss values, the IADM model had more feasibility in itself and uh, less logical inconsistencies. So, yeah, uh, that's all from us.